Welcome back to Math 103. This is video number 21 on growth and finance. Last time we finished doing the algebra necessary to isolate fv on one side of the equation and get just a number that we'll still need to compute on the other side of the equation. fv, you recall, is the future value of our fixed deferred annuity, the result of making 10 separate deposits of $2,000 into an account that pays 6.3% annual interest. So we need to compute this. As a first simplifying step, it's nice to note that you can factor out a 2,000 here. This is important to understand algebraically. So I'm working just in the numerator. I have 2,000 times something minus 2,000 times something. That's the same thing as 2,000 times the something minus something. Okay. Notice, however, that 2,000 times the numerator is the same thing as 2,000 times the whole fraction. So I've factored out a 2,000 from my expression. I've got 2,000 times this thing, which is perhaps a little easier to work with. When computing this, there are many potential errors in plugging into the calculator. It's especially important to note that 1.063 to the 10th minus 1 must be computed as a whole expression before you divide by 0.063. I recommend using extra parentheses to make sure that you do this correctly. At the end of the day, you get $26,735.95 as your future value. That is plausible in the sense that there are 10 separate deposits of $2,000 each, so that's $20,000 just in cash going from your pocket to the bank account, and then the rest is, re is the result of interest accumulating. So the result, in the end, is somewhat more than $20,000. That's plausible. Had it been any less than $20,000, it would not have been plausible. And had it been vastly more than this amount, it would not have been plausible either. It would not have been plausible if we'd computed a number in the millions, for example. So what did we just do, really? We took our sum, our long sum, for future value, and we did some manipulation with that clever cancellation argument, we ended up with this expression, and then we plugged into the calculator. Now, what if it weren't $2,000 specifically? What if it weren't 10 payments specifically, but a different number of payments? What if it weren't 6.3% interest specifically, but a different interest rate? We could apply exactly the same thought process, exactly the same clever algebraic tricks, and that would lead us to a formula that looks very much like this expression. In other words, in the place of $2,000, we would get whatever amount the payment was. PMT here is the amount of each payment. Instead of 6.3% interest, we could have some other interest rate, but we'd have to be sure to express it in decimal form inside the formula. And that will occur in two separate places. Note how the interest rate occurred two separate places in this expression. It occurs in two separate places in general, Finally, if we didn't have 10 payments, but some other number, we know where exactly that other number goes in our computation. It is the exponent of 1 plus i. It's worth understanding that this formula only applies in the setting of a fixed deferred annuity. It's only when we're thinking about multiple payments, equal regular payments, and adding up the sum of their accumulated future values. Only in that situation are we going to use this formula. The compound interest formula that we set up, that we derived earlier, that was for a one-time payment. This is not for one-time payments. This is for multiple payments, repeated regular payments. It's also worth noting that this formula contains an expression we've seen before, 1 plus i. This is our old friend, the growth factor for a single growth period. It shows up in the compound interest formula, and it shows up again in this formula. One noteworthy difference between the two formulas is that only this one has i appearing twice. Our first application of the formula will be to convince ourselves that it actually works. We're going to apply it to an example where we already computed the answer the long way. So recall this example of investing $1,000 at the end of every year into an account paying 4% annual interest. This is still just compounded annually, and without the help of a formula, we computed it the long way to be $6,632.98. Now, let's convince ourselves 
that this formula actually computes the right value. Here, PMT, the regular payment, is $1,000. I, the annual interest rate, in decimal form is 0 0.04. That occurs in two locations in the formula. And N, the number of payments, that's six payments. That's just information that we're told at the beginning of the problem. Before going on to the next video, use the formula for the future value of a fixed deferred annuity to verify that the value of the sum, of this sum, is in fact $6,632.98 as we computed the hard way earlier.